even get to really meet each other <laughs> last week. So Michael's going to come on up and uh, teach the character quality for this evening, which is... Tactfulness. Tactfulness. Being Uh, or the handheld, I can oh, the handheld will be fine. See if I'm in the picture when I'm up there. Move it around. It's up here. That's what you have I to had look. to look in that? Yeah. I need someone tall. Cr so Crystal, <laughs> can you stand up? Just kind of aim this, move it up it. and down to see if I'm in the picture. I'd have to step on that. Where would I see? Okay. You look in here. Yeah. I don't want to cut your head off. There we go. Are we okay? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Oops. Hi. Now I don't have to yell so loud. Hello, everybody. Hello. I found a new website for some more character qualities that uh, Kathy kind of said, do do these, and so I looked up, and this is a, a really great website on more character qualities, another thing called mindtools.com. So I'd like you all to, in your own growth as an individual, it has a lot of great stuff on it for individuals, and there's no charge. Praise God. I want you to think for a moment. We're going to just uh, put ourselves in, uh, in the place of being a manager at a small company or whatever, and one of your key people just finished giving a presentation. And uh, the guy who gave it, we'll call him Joe, but not any reflection on our, our Joe here. Um, he seemed pleased, Joe seemed pleased with his performance, but it was obvious to everybody that he was not properly prepared. His presentation was poorly researched and badly organized. And you as manager were disappointed that one of your people would do that. Well, before everyone or most people left the room, Joe came up and says, hey, Joe, uh, Mike, what's the feedback? How did I do? Well, I did the unpardonable. <laughs> And that was, I told him what I thought of it right in front of everybody else. Oh, that. I told him it was sloppy, disorganized, and that I expected more from him. As soon as I let all that out, I go, what a jerk I am. I embarrass this man. It's like cutting a pillow open, throwing the feathers up in the air and try to catch them. Take them back. You can't. Unsurprisingly, Joe was a little angry, upset, as I rightfully lamented my comments. I wanted to be honest, but I didn't want to hurt his feelings, especially in front of other people. But I spoke before I thought. Has anybody ever done that in their lives? <laughs> okay. <laughs> A month later, Joe handed in his resignation because he just couldn't forget or forgive my faux pas. He may have done a bad presentation, but I didn't have the tactfulness of how to share with him how I could still gain his respect and he would be able to move on. And I know we've all done this, so I'm just so thankful that I found and was assigned this tactfulness. We all have to communicate at one time or another painful or sensitive information, both in our careers and in our home life, friendship life, etc. And while it's important to tell the truth to somebody, it's almost equally important how we do it. You just can't be a doctor with no bedside manner saying you're going to die tomorrow without cushioning it in some way, shape, or form. Tact allows us to be honest, 
while, res while respecting the other person's feelings and wholeness. Because a lot of times our words cut right through their life and do a lot of harm. When we communicate tactfully, we preserve friendships, relationships, credibility, and demonstrate thoughtfulness. There's so much just to that one word called tactfulness, and it wasn't part of the 49 character qualities. In fact, what is tact? It's the ability to tell the truth in a way that considers the other people's feelings and reactions. So when we're in a position, whether it's a mom or a dad or friendship, we got to really think before we act. And some of this thinking we have to organize a little bit so it doesn't come out so haphazardly. Tact encompasses so many things. Emotional intelligence, respect, discretion. Start thinking of these as I read down and say, yeah, good tactfulness does this. Self-awareness, thoughtfulness, compassion, subtlety, honesty, diplomacy, and courtesy. Wow. Good tact allows us to give difficult feedback, communicate sensitive information, and it says the right thing to preserve a friendship, a relationship. Because that Joe that quit the job, he could have been a star if I would have kept my mouth shut and said something to him in private later on. He could have had a bad day at home. He could have had that he didn't prepare very well because of extenuating circumstances. I think we all know why is tact so important? It's important in all of our fields when we have to deliver bad news. Good news is easy. We won! <laughs> we got the contract! But to say tactfully the bad heart stuff, wow. It provides critical feedback, whether you're in a personal job or professional. Communicating tactfully strengthens this is really important. You know, you really would like to be associated, and you yourself, when you think about it, you'd like to be a tactful person. It strengthens your reputation among others, because I think most of us aren't very tactful because we haven't been taught too much how to deliver, how to say something. It builds your credibility with other people. It allows you to preserve existing relationships and build new ones. A tactful approach shows character on your side. Wow, that's neat the way she said that. That's neat the way she brought, or he brought, the goodness out in that person. It shows maturity, professionalism, integrity, and it certainly demonstrates good manners. By communicating with grace and consideration, you will stand out from the crowd. You know, if you want to get ahead in life, if I want to get ahead in life, you learn how to do things so you're not offending people at all as much as possible. You'll get noticed for the right reason, not the wrong reason. Oh, he's tactless. He has no tact at all. You can find common ground when you search for it by being tactful. You can allow others to save face. You're not here to embarrass other people. You're here for the facts and here to encourage both the people that agree with you and the people that don't agree with you. This was interesting too. Tact is strongly influenced by culture. So if, if I'm giving this talk or behave, you know, going somewhere else in a different culture where people don't look at each other in the eye, I think it's in China or these places where you know, you, you just don't, here we're taught to go face to face. And so we have to be very careful and cognizant of what and who our audience is. I thought that was interesting. So you got to make sure that you're culturally alert to whom you're speaking with. Tip number two, it's great to be tactful. How, however, you also need to get your message across 
ensure that your own your own rights. You're not here to grovel. Okay, when you uh, have to do something that's important, you have to make sure your rights are respected and that you explain the issue assertively, not submissively. So tactfulness doesn't mean you cower down. You just know that you have a right to do what you're doing, but you're saying it in a way that's not hurtful or prideful. So here's some developing tact. Uh, number some ways create the right environment you know sometimes we got to think when we try to evangelize someone's at a football game and it's third down and they're making something and you say do you want to know about Jesus Christ <laughs> I mean gee whiz that's not you know you have to have the right environment otherwise you may blow it and say oh there's another one of them Christians uh, Charles Finney, I've been reading his book, and he's very careful on how to approach somebody. They have to be ready, they have to be sincere, they have to be open, and usually it's one-on-one -on -one that you talk with, so that you can actually help get into his or her heart. So the right environment, and again, think before you speak. How many times have we all spoken too quickly? Practice what we call active listening. That's the listening skills that we learned from equipping ministries. Got to have emotional intelligence. Really understand what the world's, what, what, what is going on. You want to connect with people and see life from their perspective too. Because certainly life is not all about Mike Kelly. Life's about all 40 of you or so. You know, we all have to understand each other. We, we should all work to build trust and have integrity. Determine the appropriate time, as we just were talking about evangelism. Tact means saying the right thing at the right time. Choose your words carefully. Avoid, this, this is really good, it'll be real short. Um, starting a sentence with the word you, avoid that. For example, you need to do better next time, Gwen, yeah. will make Gwen feel defensive, but instead do something softer. <clears throat> next time, I think, if you prepare a little beforehand, you'll do fabulous rather than you did a terrible job. It's especially important, they said, to use the I statement so that people know you take responsibility for what you're saying. When you do this, you take ownership instead of placing blame. For example, it says, I see things differently. I had to go over that section three or four times before I understood it. Okay? You could also cushion something. Connecting a statement when you disagree with someone. You can cushion a message saying, you know, someone, I could say, you're wrong, we did do well. Or, I respect your opinion, but we did do well. It's so important to practice this type of thing because a lot of us don't practice it. We do it and go, whoops, that, that won't work. I won't do that ever again. Okay. Also, when you're in a tense conversation, be very concise and to the point. It's tempting to keep talking when you feel uncomfortable, but only say what needs to be said and that's enough. Don't go on and on and on and on, because they may pick up other things that they're not liking what you say. Okay? Isn't it neat? This, this is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Watch your body language. We talk about that in uh, the listening skills that we teach so that people know and understand that you care. Your arms aren't crossed and you frown, but you're open. You're open to them. You make the eye contact, etc. And never react emotionally. Be in control of yourself, even if you have to count to a hundred. <laughs> Let that chemistry fall down or don't let it in. That's, that's another thing that we have to practice. When you understand what triggers you, you can work 
audit so they don't trigger you like they did before. Because our whole purpose is to grow and show respect. So I think I can end right there. You might like on page five on some common examples on how you do some things like letting team members go for whatever reason, giving feedback, declining an invitation instead of saying, no, I'm not coming. You know, you, you might say, I'm so thankful that you've invited me. I would love to go, but I just can't. I'm sure next time, uh, hopefully my calendar will be clear and be able to do uh, whatever it is that you're asking. Deflect gossip. Don't let gossip start in your group. You can just stand up and say, I don't appreciate that, or let's wait until she's here or he's here so that we can discuss it intelligently. Then you handle disagreements. Tact is particularly useful in conflict resolution. And then giving presentations. So the key point at the end here is the ability to deliver a difficult message in such a way that considers other people's feelings and it preserves relationships, okay? So mindtools.com is a lot of great stuff. You know, we can love Christ, but unless God says you got to take care of your body too so that you may love me a lot, but no one else thinks you know how to love or do anything. So we got to have these skills. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mike and Joe and Ken and all those who come to address